good space, honorable? No, I'm not in the good space, honorable Masiko. I think we can continue with honorable Masiko as the chairperson. When she's off, then somebody will just take over until she gets connected. Um, thank you, members. Um, and members have um, elected uh, Member Masiko, and then there was a second. Uh, and before I can hand over to Member Masiko, are there any further nominations? Because uh, my member Malulek, uh, she's also indicated that she's not in a good space. So I will hand over to Member Masiko to continue with the meeting. Thank you, members. Thank you very much, uh, honorable members, and good afternoon to everyone who has attended the meeting. Uh, this meeting has been called to receive one item from the Department of Women, Youth and Persons with Disabilities. Um, and the report that we'll be receiving is on gender responsive planning, budgeting, monitoring, and evaluation framework, as well as um, guidelines the country gender indicator framework as well as the gender pri uh, policy priorities for 2019-2024. Uh, all members are welcome. We must also warmly welcome the Department of Women, Youth and Persons with Disabilities. Um, Honourable members, we will then do item number two. We will request to Nelly is what to take us through if we have received any apologies. I know the chair noted the apology of the chairperson of the portfolio committee, honorable uh, member Mubendaba, who has sent a formal apology. Are there any other apologies, uh, Nelly? Thank you, chairperson. I have received two apologies. Um, one from member Sharif, who could not attend today, and also, no, it's not to its three. Um, um, two also from the minister and the DG who had uh, prior meetings. They could not attend, but they will be represented by the deputy minister and the DDG from the department. I thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, um, uh, Neliswa. Uh, honorable members will then move on to item number three. Uh, which is the briefing from the Department of Women, Youth and Persons with Disabilities. Uh, we, the Minister will then request to Deputy Minister to uh, give any introductory remarks and then we'll request her to hand over to uh, the individual or official that has been tasked with uh, doing the presentation on behalf of the Department. Uh, DM, I'll hand over to you. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson of the day. Uh, I greet you all and I hope you, we are going to have the of working. Honorable members, thank you for this opportunity to present to you for deliberation the work we've done on the gender response planning, budgeting, monitoring evaluation framework, gender indicator framework, and the gender priorities, which later. Um, Honorable DM. And this is Patrick. Yes. DM. I don't know whether it's my network now or it's your network that is, we, we can't hear you. DM? Yes, hello? Hello? Did I change the venue quickly? And see. Honorable members, am I the only one who's not hearing DM properly, or is it DM that's in a position that is not correct? The network coverage is not good. You are not the only one. No, yeah. you are not the only one. Okay, DM, can you kindly reposition yourself so that we will be able to hear you? Yes, as I'm talking to you, 
I'm going to another usual spot. I hope it's gonna be better. Is it better now? It's a bit Hello. better, DM, you may proceed. We can hear you, DM. Okay then. I was just thanking honorable members for the opportunity. And let me quickly go there. Honorable members, thank you for this opportunity to present to you for deliberation the work we've done on the gender responsive planning, budgeting, monitoring, evaluation framework, the country gender indicator framework, and the gender policy priorities, which are all interrelated. Parliament in general, and this committee in particular, plays a critical role in ensuring the implementation of the GRPB framework and in realizing our country's women empowerment and gender equality goals. The GRPB framework was adopted by cabinet on 27 March, 2019, and is also an obligation arising from the current 2019 electoral mandate for the sixth administration. It was a response to poor accountability for performance on women's empowerment and gender equality across the state and civil society. You will know honorable members from our evaluation report since 1994, we have been very weak when it comes to measuring and accounting and accounting on these factors. So we also have had weak institutionalization of gender mainstreaming with many plan planning instruments and policies being gender blind. The framework provides a conceptual framework and a clear implementation plan which cuts across the entire state machinery and civil society. The implementation is premised around 10 pillars which are focused on the integration of gender priorities at all levels of the country's policy, planning, budgeting, monitoring, evaluation, and auditing systems. We are pleased to note that though it is still too early, it's the early stages of implementation, fair progress has been made in a number of areas. I will highlight just a few. For the first time in our democracy, the 2019-2024 MTSF includes explicit reference to impacts, outcomes, interventions, indicators, and targets relating to women, youth, and disability rights. This gives the department a firm foundation to cascade these indicators into the strategic plans, into, into their strategic plans and APPs of all government departments and public entities. We collaborated closely with the Department of Monitoring and Evaluation to ensure that the frameworks and guidelines on institutional planning make explicit reference to requirements regarding women, youth, and persons with disabilities. We've analyzed the responsiveness of strategic plans and APPs and provided feedback to DGs through DPME. Together with the National School of Governance, we've developed a training module on GRPB. The pilot of this reached an initial 100 public service managers and received very positive feedback uh, from, from feedback from the participants. National Treasury has begun to address requirements relating to gender responsive budgeting, including requirements and guidelines in this regard in the current MTC guidelines. 
based on our inputs, the Department of Monitoring and Evaluation revised national evaluation policy framework approved by cabinet and, and made sure it's gender responsive and includes gender across the evaluation cycle. We've developed proposed gender policy priorities for 2019-2024, and as part of the Generation Equality Global Campaign, we will be initiating a bottom-up campaign on what women want and to provide platforms for women to make their inputs on the country policy priorities to ensure gender equality by 2030. We developed the country gender indicator framework, which has served to translate the policy priorities into measurable indicators and to inform the inclusion of priority areas in the planning instruments. We are continuing to focus on advocacy, education, to ensure that no one is left behind and that we develop a truly gender responsive public service, which is able to effect fundamental transformation in gender relations, improve the lives of women and girls, and take us closer to our goal of gender equality and a non-sexist society. Honorable members, we count on each and every one of us as public representatives to monitor and advocate for compliance as cabinet has taken a position that all priority programs, be it gender-based violence and femicide or a program on an economy recovery plan, they should be geolocated at the district development model. So we have an opportunity then to evaluate all the programs at a district development model using the instruments that you are presenting to honorable members uh, today. I thank you, honorable Jefferson. Honorable members, I'm not sure whether Honorable Masiko has been cut off or what, but let me just take over and say thank you very much, DM, for the kind words and the introduction. So without any waste of time, DM, I'm not sure who's going to present uh, for us today. So let's just go straight to the presentation so that we can have enough time to engage the presentation. Thank you, DM. I, honorable members, I then asked TPG Annette to present uh, the documents that I introduced. Thank you. Thank you. Members. Thank you, DM. Um, good afternoon, uh, uh, honorable uh, chair and uh, deputy minister and honorable members. I will present the uh, Gender Responsive Planning, Budgeting, Monitoring and Evaluation Framework. Uh, my colleague, Chief Director, Monitoring Evaluation, Daniel Marco, will present the Country Gender Indicator Framework and uh, the Chief Director, Policy and Research, Ranji Reddy, will present the policy uh, priorities. Um, I'm going to try to share my screen. I hope it's um, successful. Uh, is it visible? Yes, it is. All right. Thank you very much. So um, this is, uh, 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 we appreciate this opportunity uh, because this is critical, as Deputy Minister has said, in achieving our goals of uh, gender equality. And I think just by way of background, um, we know, all know that despite important advances in women's uh, empowerment since the inception of democracy, uh, we still have the majority 
majority of girls, are, women and girls are still subject to poverty, unemployment, gender-based violence, and many other uh, social problems. Um, and that they face multiple and intersecting forms of discrimination uh, and depression. We know also, and this is one of the assumptions behind our framework, that women are not homogenous, that inequality and deprivation is, is based on uh, race, class, gender, spatial location, uh, and so on. That in, and in general, African women are first affected by these deprivations. We also acknowledge that unpaid care work is a key source of gender inequality uh, and that women's exclusion uh, for, or, or, uh, from the mainstream economy and lack of access to economic uh, opportunities uh, is also uh, key to their inequality and is underpinned by patriarchy, unequal gender relations, a legacy of racial oppression, and unequal access to uh, control and ownership of the economy, including land. And uh, we have shared with uh, members, I believe, the 25-year review of women's empowerment and gender equality which has detailed information in this regard. Um, why do we need gender responsive policy, uh, planning, budgeting, monitoring, evaluation, and auditing? Uh, of, as as the minister, a deputy minister has indicated, part of this is achieving our constitutional vision of a non-sexist society, but also to ensure that women's empowerment is not an afterthought, but is at the center of public policy, planning, and budgeting, uh, but also to improve the country's performance, and to promote inclusive growth and development. We, we, we have, have done research that shows that uh, investing in, in women is not just a moral imperative, it's also an economic imperative. Um, the, this framework is also linked to the institutionalization of gender mainstream across the state machinery, the broader transformation agenda, the outcomes and results-based approach, uh, as well as the, the overall government-wide policy planning and prioritization, and obviously critically uh, also the broader public finance and budgetary reforms. Now, in terms of our mandate, I think the, 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 the committee is well aware of our mandate as the Department of Women, Youth and Persons with Disability. Um, and we also note that this mandate also derives from multiple instruments at a global, regional and national level the, the Sustainable Development Innovation Platform for Atlas Women, as well as the uh, African Union instruments, the instruments our very own NDP and uh, the South African Policy Framework on Women's Empowerment and Gender Equality. But we, part of the underlying uh, principles of this framework is that even though this is the role of the department, every government department, public entity, uh, provinces and municipalities have a mandate to deliver transformation. Um, uh, South Africa, South Africa has previously had a number of initiatives around gender responsive budgeting, primarily. Um, most of these have lacked sustainability, uh, and, and in fact, some of them, uh, the members would be aware were also part of the, um, the portfolio committee in, in parliament uh, played a very key role. Uh, that was around 1995 and, and, and similar initiatives. But all of these lack sustainability and administrative uh, level. Um, we said that we also acknowledge that individual role players and champions are very key. But part of the strategy is to not embed it with only in, within one institution or within one department or whatever. But the, the, the strategy should be to embed gender responsive planning budgeting across the state machinery in multiple institutions, including the administration. Parliament has a critical role to play. Chapter nine, uh, the, you know, the Commission uh, for Gender Equality, political parties and civil society. There is a need for political support at the highest level, as well as technical capacity. Um, expert, external entities is of value, but it's important to also avoid excessive reliance on consultants and ensure proper skills transfer within the uh, administration to, to deliberately build technical capacity across the system and ensure that there are accountability mechanisms at all levels. 
and one of the innovations of our, that we have uh, is, is introduced um, was to also focus on the entire public policy cycle. So not only budgeting, but you know, to in uh, at all levels and I'll come back to that. We also said that voluntary systems tend to lack teeth uh, and sustainability. So consideration should be given to legislative mechanisms and other mechanisms to incentivize compliance. Um, we have adopted a, a multidisciplinary uh, approach, uh, drawing from different disciplines, concepts, and practices, including gender studies, evidence-based policy and, and, and uh, public policy, public management, uh, and also public finance and performance-based budgeting. Now, the overall approach is, is, is basically to say that if we want to improve country gender outcomes, we need to set clear gender-responsive policy priorities uh, and we need to then ensure that those policy priorities are indeed translated into programs with clear program outcomes, with clear indicators and targets, um, and that we need to then allocate those budgets to achieve the priorities. Now, this is a, a, a typical uh, public policy cycle, you know, starting with the diagnostic, the identification of needs, uh, the gender gaps, also taking into account mandates, uh, policy and programming, budgeting, implementation, expenditure, monitoring and evaluation, uh, as well as performance and expenditure reviews. And based on that, you then develop, adjust, you then adjust your programs. Um, budgeting uh, framework of the, to serve as a catalyst to effect on shift towards gender mainstreaming to ensure that women's empowerment public policy priorities and budgeting and ensure the allocation of adequate and equitable resources enhance the country's overall levels of inclusive growth contribute to our constitutional vision, vision of a non um, Now, the overall approach uh, in, in some quarters, uh, even still within government, women's empowerment is seen as a social sector issue across all sectors, uh, and, and women is very, very critical. And mentioned, uh, the current NTSF has indeed uh, included gender issues across all the seven priorities. And um, we also have greater institutional uh, accountable level um, and, and ensure proper gender response is transparent. Now, this is the overall uh, theory of change, uh, which has been including the public policy cycle. But also, this is also where we need to take into account the, the, the voices of ordinary women and the gender policy priorities from multiple sources. With, based on those priorities, planning must then take place um, with proper uh, indicators, baselines. Uh, that's where you get mentoring and monitoring, evaluating and reviewing. Although evaluation can take place at any point, uh, you know, value for money uh, uh, evaluations, uh, good practice, what works. Not just saying this. Amatori district has managed to, for example get 40% of, of uh, women uh, involved in procurement, you know, what are they doing right that other districts can replicate? Um, that should then also lead to learning, performance reviews and the evaluations, adaptive management, better program implementation, and that should lead to improved performance. And this is the gender results uh, effectiveness scale, which we have to gender blind, to gender targeted, to gender responsive, to gender transformative. And our country, most of our plans, we currently gender blind uh, or gender targeted in some cases, but we, we still, you know, trying to move towards a situation where we transform uh, uh, the, the, the gender relations and address uh, gender inequality. So the overall approach was 90s when uh, gender used in, in, you know, and, and there was a big push from the party. Uh, there was no uh, planning and, and monitoring system. But right now, we actually, as a country, planning and uh, monitoring. So we said our strategy is in the short to medium term is to mainstream gender within national planning monitoring, which extends uh, countrywide and uh, are applicable to all national and all provincial governments, some mixed well. 
And the same goes for budgeting systems and procedures. Let, we've developed the country gender indicator framework, which is there to audience, to uh, understand this. Um, and in some cases, not always we would draw from multiple evidence and data and ensure that uh, our interventions and programs based on uh, diagnostic and desired outcomes for women and girls. Um, these are the critical role players. And, um, you know, we're saying that meeting again, because sometimes we still find departments or provinces, they say no, we have the gender focal point. Really, it's a responsibility, and we have strong support. Well, the president has actually, the president announced in uh, that uh, the ministers' performance agreements, for example, must include deliverables on, on, on gender equality. So we're saying equality is an obligation of all public office facilities and uh, society in general. The critical roles, obviously, the ministry um, and is a, there is a champion playing an overall role with regard to strategic leadership. DPME as minister, as deputy minister, um, the minister of finance and national treasury, the vision is that they must become a center of excellent budgeting. Um, and then this other center of government departments, DPSA, stats is a cocktail. We'll come back to that. Provinces, we've been doing more and more work with provinces, uh, have an important role to play, and municipalities, uh, particularly with COCTA and, and, and mayor's offices playing a, a leading role. But of course, as mentioned, key role to play, particularly this uh, particular, uh, but also uh, one would like to see all committees and, and uh, uh, control with regard to uh, departments are indeed allocating budgets to uh, uh, gender equality delivery. And of course, the multi-party women's caucus, where we have already uh, made a presentation that I've already spoken. Um, in, in a number of countries, the uh, civil society also believes uh, these Members can they did include um, the education plan. DPME has been doing state papers uh, in the doing allocations, and we have agreed that the NDP, even the very, very uh, critical document. Ensuring that there are outputs um, and that there's a regular data um, and that every outcome of E does performance reports to cabinet. And we said there shouldn't be any performance report without the inclusion of gender uh, performance. Uh, there was an integrated planning bill where we had made extensive invited for the roles of the Minister of Women. Uh, the 25 year review, I think we've just mentioned uh, that was an important uh, contribution to. Uh, understanding how far we have come, but also identifying gaps ahead. Um, in terms of country planning, we distinguish between country planning, institutional planning, which is basically as well as uh, state-owned uh, uh, enterprises. And those are the strategic plans of what that should should uh, include, and we've made good progress there. Um, the plan is also uh, something that is quite important. Um, and then we also, uh, sorry, uh, I've spoken about the APPs, the, the analysis of the APPs, this was specified. And then we said we need five-year gender policy priorities, and that will be by, by uh, Ranji, because they um, are linked, obviously, to the to the TSF uh, and, and are drawn from multiple sources, including uh, constitution, the uh, election, um, and so that's, that should give guidance also to to the, to the mainstreaming of the other components, very important is evaluation, Firstly, the national evaluation system. Uh, we said that the, the national evaluation policy framework should be, as well as the um, gender responsive guidelines, and templates. Um, and then, you know, we, we indicated in, in integration of gender across the evaluation, and that was included in the revised evaluation policy framework. Uh, so, statuting, uh, commissioning and undertaking evaluations, data collection and analysis. We find that uh, disaggregation of data by disability. 
um, but also, you know, search project. And we find that sometimes perspectives of women uh, versus unbalanced. And then also the need that you prevent hidden biases and the notions, the improvement plans, the capacity building, uh, and so on. Also, women uh, being uh, in uh, profession. Part of the evaluation knowledge and evidence is also to, to um, develop a, and we know that this is work that DPME had already initiated, and we said we need to have ensure that there's a proper gender component of the knowledge and evidence uh, repository. So this is all in the plan that was adopted by cabinet. We said that's also mainstream gender within the frontline service delivery monitoring assessments. Uh, include gender sensitivity in the rating system. For example, when visits are done to schools, uh, you know, assess you know how those uh, girls uh, in health institutions, police stations, do they have rape kits? Um, and then, of course, MPAT, MPAT has been changed a bit, but uh, we're also looking at that. With regard to uh, services administration, which is the custodian of uh, the, the system, we said, we can't just, as in the minister's performance agreements, it must be cascaded right down to the to the DGs. DGs must be accountable and have that in their performance agreements, as well as all levels of already uh, developed a training module on capacity building on this. International reporting, uh, this is very much linked to international reporting, so that the data collection, the, the even the gender indicator framework uh, today or will that we so that we integrate the international indicators where possible um, and then of course you know even issues such as the cabinet memo templates the cs to be strengthened um the the this reference to vulnerable groups but sometimes the, the, the indication is just this will give lives of women and girls you know so it need that this the the socioeconomic impact assistance also needs to be uh, improved national treasury uh, we had included a whole lot of uh, requirements with response to budgeting, um, including the budget guidelines. We said that when departments bid for their budgets, uh, 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 demonstrate the allocations that are going to benefit women uh, and, and, and ensure. Uh, so, for example, um, and that, that includes as well as this aggregated program. So, you know, we would love to see uh, the budget policy statement and the national budget speech, uh, even the budget books seem to indicate this is the allocation that we are making to women uh, and, and, and towards uh, gender equality. And then legislation, um, the, it seems that the, the PME bill, uh, uh, it's unclear what the status of that currently is. Um, persons with disability has indicated its intention to introduce the wiki bill, and uh, we would like to 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 see the, the gender response planning budgeting, and then um, a number of countries. There are countries in the Clear Public Finance Management Act, so we are also indicating that that should be considered. Now. Um, I'm not, uh, some of it I've already covered. Um, it is if, as the minister has mentioned, has explicit uh, gender priorities um, and it will impact across the seven priorities. Be interesting to, to look at that, um, those indicators. And the main interest is one document. So we believe it is mainstreamed. Um, I've spoken about the indicator framework, the mandate paper, the 25 year review. Um, as well as I think we, we are seeing uh, documents such as the State of the Nation Address. Um, we've seen uh, there's, there's always reference to uh, gender uh, issues, the implementation guidelines that we've made. In, um, I think the one area where we focus quite a lot, in addition to the inter, uh, huge uh, uh, inputs, um, is also the, uh, the, 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 the institutional planning. So we made in developing the revised framework. Uh, that was given legal effect through the national treasury instruction uh, we also made inputs on the guidelines on the implementation a whole uh, 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 added, uh, uh, guidance to to departments on how to uh, mainstream gender we've done strategic plans uh, we've made inputs in analytical framework uh, to actually analyze the responsiveness and we're busy talking to departments now because in fact we have been uh, for a while 
because the, the first draft APPs are due, every sessions with, with departments and provinces are due, and then the analysis of uh, selected uh, strategic plans. Apart from our own guidelines, uh, we, can, we have forwarded uh, all of these uh, gender responsive policy priorities. Um, Ranji will, will present that and um, um, the evaluation knowledge and evidence I've spoken about some of the evaluation policy framework, uh, the guidelines and evaluation of the gender responsive planning budgeting framework and the development. So did a a monitoring framework for the, the for this particular uh, framework uh, based on the implementation plan and it consisted of three main uh, parts part one for the center of government departments part two for uh, national government departments and then part three for uh, provinces um, we did a we also did a 1920 quarterly performance reports and there was we found that they are basically uh, gender blind, and that, that also showed us that we needed to do a lot more work in working. Responsive budgeting, we've, we've made some good progress, although there's a lot of, and we feel also that Treasury needs uh, its own uh, technical expertise, uh, gender responsive budgeting. Uh, into, as I said, we, 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 we have, have tried to include those as for reports, for example, for the uh, Beijing Plus 25 report, and most of those have been well, I think all of them have also been shared with the honourable members. It obviously, has a key. And we were we did make a presentation at the multi-party committee, and we're very happy to be with you today as well. I've spoken to management. Um, as I said, the president did make a commitment uh, to include gender-specific delivery targets in the performance agreements of ministers, mayors, and uh, so on. Uh, we have established a high-level steering committee in response to plan budgeting. In fact, that was established meeting regularly. It was disrupted by COVID, but we and we have a very to ensure greater accountability. We increasingly realised that uh, you know, uh, education is very, very critical, and that part of it is also mindsets, amongst managers and and other officials, um, you know, building locating. Uh, chair responsive plan budgeting at the center of department. So driven downwards and not only the gender paper boys. Gender a very important role, but we're saying it should be the DGs. Um, and we, even though we support from cabinet and the DG clusters implementation. So implementation, we need to develop uh, the competencies and, and, and just keep on words to many, many officials. But we realized also that um, it, it takes time for people um, but we've had good feedback that the NSG uh, was an initial uh, 100 as it, and it seemed to, to work very well. Um, so uh, that was just a, an overview of, of the framework. Thank you very much. I'll now hand over to Danae. Danae, do you want to share? Sorry, sorry, Honourable uh, Chair. I have uh, All right. framework and continues to strengthen the progress to agenda equality and then on utilizing the existing government results-based management and planning and policy cycle. Um, regular reporting um, for and in future will supplement uh, much needed info largely with your performance information and to inform planning budgeting and valuation process. Um, the country gender indicates that there are trade-offs between having a comprehensive of gender indicators and reporting burdens in place on the country um, government department and agencies. It's a continuation of a whole lot of reporting that we need to manage in terms of the reporting against the country gender indicator framework. For the, um, the, the South Africa country gender indicator is organized. We're looking at it from a result-based management where the key indicator change 
are based on the theory of implementation from input, program outputs and activities with a focus on documents or information from the NDP, MTSF, um, as well as sector, um, sector plans, department and performance. And then further there is to look at the components around the results which we took into outcomes, the gender, um, South African gender outcomes, intermediate and um, ultimate as well as the intended development indicators coming from the, um, the SDG, the AU 2026 development protocol, um, as well as the national development uh, plan. So that, that is the um, sort of the indicator framework we can uh, continue to look. Um, so as I've indicated, the, the key domain for the gender indicator plan, we have the development indicators as the program performance indicators. Um, and largely around the development the indicators, um, looking at indicators of current development impact um, and national outcomes, and with a bigger focus on the ambit of the AU, um, direct and priorities and indicators, as well as gender, um, South African gender policy priorities. So similar, um, um, you know, project of how the indicator is being organized. And further to that are the program performance indicators. And largely here, they we focusing on key sector indicators, um, looking at economic empowerment, financial inclusion, in infrastructure, we're looking at social services, health and education, also governance agency and ways um, in terms of representation, and also looking at indicators, performance um, indicators coming from pro provincial and local levels. Um, and other indicators that are available for use um, in specific, which are customized on it. Um, the next component is the outline of the indicators that are coming to country gender indicator. So we need to um, looking at the Beijing de Declaration and Platform for Action. We have about 52 of these indicators in the country gender indicator, covering various sectors, um, the economic, education sector, health sector, and decision making, human rights um, for women and, and girls and girl children. So there's about 19 in um, the economic space. We have 12, 11 in health. Um, we have a, um, public life and human rights that we're covering in the um, Beijing, from the Beijing uh, platform for action. And um, a component of the other indicators that are included at the development um, indicator level is this um, sustainable development. And so we're covering a broad range of those indicators, goal six, goal seven, and goal nine. Um, however, we're covering goal one um, around the ending of poverty, and are ensuring health, healthy lives, um, quality of education. Um, we're also covering indicator around achieving gender equal empowerment for all women and girls. Um, that's the greater indicator which has a focus on gender equality and status. And then also the goal A, sustain inclusive and sustainable economy. As well as at the goal to reduce income inequality within and among countries. So there is one indicator that's in the indicator framework. And further with development goal, if we move to the next um, slide, um, we also covering goal 11, um, pulling three goal 11, um, and then uh, the goal 12 and 17. We have not um, the and in indicator for consideration in terms of the gender the country gender indicator, and then with, um, with one indicator coming from there, um, as well as goal 16, um, promoting peace, and we also have pulled um, six um, indicators. SDG, we have about 53 indicators um, considered or included in the country gender indicator framework. And in terms of indicator, um, we have about 33 indicators coming from the African Union and the federal commitment indicators. Um, with um, all that are in this ADEC in African Union. Looking at commitment one, we're carrying about eight indicators. Um, commitment two, peace and security, and commitment three, child soldier. And four, around gender based violence. We also have um, commitment six and nine, human rights. Um, commitment seven, land property and inheritance rights. We have two indicators um, in terms of education. There's two around commitment 10. We also have that in terms of the Africa work, we have two indicators, um, fund for women, we have two indicators, and so in total, we have about 33 indicators. And further, in terms
terms of the Africa Gender Development Index, um, which we just read with Kudre. Um, so we're looking at um, three components, which is the social power, economic power, as well as the political gender indicating framework. So the, the SADC protocol on gender and gender, this is an agreement that was adopted by all the sequential women empowerment um, with coaches um, from the category of governance, with governance three and education, there's three um, indicators from economy um, five to sexual and with indicators. Um, it's still a healthy indicators that we give there. And in terms of media, we're looking at about six indicators within the country. Um, so bringing it home in terms of the national indicators within the country gender indicator, we have about 21 um, meters all in all in the MTSS. We have about 34 indicators, most indicators, um, and the excellent priorities. Um, so with priority one and ethical and developmental state, we have about two um, output indicators of creation. That's four indicators. Um, in terms of priority three, education, skills, and health, so there's three. And these are the cost, the cost cutting indicators in, and then consolidating um, social wage, which is priority four. We're also covering about indicators. And in terms of the social um, and local government priority five, we're covering three indicators and social cohesion and state committees covering four. And the last um, priority, which is priority seven, there's one into the country um, gender indicator framework. This is the actual list of the um, indicators that we put of the MTSF to indicator framework. Um, I'm not to go through each and every indicator, but likely we're looking at the is around addressing the level of implementation of the gender youth and budget emotional intervention policies and measures led by our department. We also have um, various numbers to address an outcome on gender youth and disability to monitor and evaluation and auditing that is institutionalized across government government entities implementing the framework itself. We also have agreement of executive authority and accounting officers that are responsive to the priorities of women, youth, and persons with disabilities. And further, another indicator is the number of national government departments, um, strategic plans, and agencies of women, um, youth, and persons with disabilities. In terms of priority two, the indicator two in the MTSF, um, in terms of increased um, economic participation, ownership, access, and wage, um, we're looking at a proportion of, you, of youth, women, and persons with disability um, that are benefiting um, from the economic trans transformation. A percentage of preferential procurement spent by um, sex, age, and these are key indicators that have been set throughout in terms of 40% uh, procurement for women, percent for youth, as well as 7% for percentage funded by sex, age, and disability. Also, um, looking at the funding coming likely led by the Department of Development, as well as looking at issues in the Department of Agriculture, land reportage of hectares of land um, distributed by um, sex, age, and disability. Um, and in terms of priority two, there's three indicators that we are going to gender indicator framework. We're looking at, um, we're looking at um, HIV prevalence rates by gender, um, age, and disability. We're looking at percentage through intervention program by gender, or by sex, age, and disability, as well as level of mainstreaming um, in targeted program by gender, age, and disability. Moving to priority four. Um, the index four indicators that have been included, which is women and girls in Peter 1, 2, 3, schools and special schools, Tibet facility receiving three sanitary toehold. That indicator has all led by the department with um, contribution coming from the um, department such as National Treasury, DTI, and um, higher education. Then there's also the, the outcome on increased access to development opportunity for them. We're looking at a percentage of any multi sexual screening, all children between the age of zero and, and eight. We're also looking at the number of family caring for children and adults with disability who have access to well defined basket of social support services by 2024, and then a number of persons with disability receiving personal assistance services supported by 2024. Looking, we're also looking at three indicators. Um, in facilitating reform housing safety, safe living environment. Um, we're looking at a percentage shared by gender 
age and disability of four redistribution um, restricted street title deeds, which is led by the Department of Agriculture and Rural Development, and also presented accounting by gender, age, and disability, as well as level of compliance with universal design norms and standards. So that is in terms of priority. Five is in facilitating the outcomes of stigmatization and discrimination and violence against women, girls, and sex, um, the reduction of that. We look at level of implementation of the um, gender-based violence um, from a side council, which is led by our department, the level of implementation of the NFP, percentage uh, of disability-related complaints and inter investigation where reasonable accommodation as well as percentage reduction in control that is in terms of priority six social cohesion and deeds. And then the last priority recovery um, in terms of vulnerability empowered and gender equality advanced through multilateral forums and engagement um, and compliance in the engagement and treaty report has merged together with BEPCO. So this indicator that we put into the country gender in Pepel is that there are other mainstream indicators that are, and we have also brought those in into the country and, and we're still um, you know um, selecting you know some of the key ones to supplement indicators. And in terms of mechanisms as a department, we we are working with the Department of uh, Planning, Monitoring and Evaluation to monitor the progress on the mainstreaming of gender across government departments. I should have really um, touch into the XPME on the mainstreaming of gender across department, uh, government departments. And um, th this will be done by a collection of information from various the indicator framework that supplements the, um, the country and budget monitoring and evaluation framework. Um, um, instruments that or, or reports that will open to find more information in line with the selected indicators. Um, in case that the data that is collected is sufficient to provide us with the actual performance. So team will actually, um, you know, supply much needed information in informing people in the public sector and will also have an understanding of, you know, the turnaround or the outcomes of women, youth and persons with disability are achieved. Um, we'll continue as a department to collect data um, on the process around collecting, collecting validating data, um, gender, disaggregated information from various systems, including the, that we can then make um, a match in terms of the performance against the, the country gender indicator. Let me draft the report. Um, that report with other existing data, data source um, and the department to look this before finalization and also opt for some improvement where possible. And the report will be included um, where it has of strengths and weaknesses, as well as recommendations for remedial action. In concluding, um, the report will be the decision making strategy, cluster system, um, the presentation itself. We are saying um, now, at 26 years in our date on women emancipation and gender equality, many months, but um, you know, there is some way to go. In terms of the framework itself, it does provide critical opportunity to drive performance on gender equality and the improvement in the lives of women and girls. Good, good progress at national level department, but just um, our department, Department of Women with Persons with Disabilities, Department of Planning, Monitoring and Evaluation. And as I said, there is strife that is very within the, plan, the planning framework. Um, although there are some lack by departments in responding. Um, there is a need for a broad-based collaboration and so the reality is realized uh, fairly soon in terms of the change around women empowerment, um, gender equality, youth development, as well as realizing that team. And there is the last of the time for agenda and results. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh now, um, we'll now hand over to Ranji with Gender Policy for uh, Good evening, uh, Honourable uh, Honourable Deputy Minister and Honourable Members of the Committee. Um, I'm going to screen, uh, okay, uh, someone is showing it. I don't know if it's being seen. No, we can't see it. Can you see it now? Okay, thank you. 
so honorable members, uh, much of the that I will be raising have already as well as uh, Dineo. Uh, this is the, the basis on which work uh, is built as well as the uh, mainstreaming that the department will be based on what has come out uh, in terms of the identification of key gender policy priorities for uh, and up to 2030. And um, just very quickly, in 2018, uh, the five-year review of uh, the progress made on women's empowerment and gender equality in the country. And uh, from those findings, we were able to extract wh what have been some of the strides, uh, positive strides that we have made as a country, but where are there still gaps? And we've, uh, oh, what, what do we need to focus on going forward? So we, from that and together with all the other areas from which the issues, we, are, we have developed a job work because it needs now to be engaged on at different levels. And uh, indicated, uh, we want we wanted a, a, a bottom up approach, and we will be able to take this forward uh, using a number of mechanisms. Um, the first uh, on is that it was key in setting agenda from uh, 2025, and it influenced our outreach, but it also uh, we're meeting that international goal, the SDGs in 2030, as well as achieving gender equality by 2030. So the whole uh, concept is about placing women in economic transformation. Of course, the, uh, a new concept. This has been, you know, a concept all the while with all the women's struggles in the car, placing women at the center. We're looking at how do we avoid what has not been working for the country, resulting from gender-blind policies and budgets, uh, take uh, women's issues into consider uh, uh, interventions that are planned in a neutral way. So, so we are saying that this must be considered when we look at all of that. We've drawn from a number of sources as uh, the, the electoral mandate, um, MTSF framework uh, from, from the previous years, and then you know, the draft framework and national priorities of the of the sixth administration uh, uh, integrate, integrated uh, carefully and as uh, uh, the DDG said it's actually a mainstream document um, the state of the nation of uh, uh, issues needed to look at uh, ministers budget vote speech and then over the over the last few years in terms of dial uh, civil society meetings um, you know, in various forums, we were actually what women were saying about about the gaps and the lived realities versus what, what, what we would think is progress you were showing otherwise. Uh, from uh, the global, the continental, the regional policies, and these are policies and instruments to which we are a, a state party. And then there's other evidence from protests, civil society uh, writings, um, uh, research reports. Um, the the pr priorities actually feed into the following seven parties. What we're saying is that the precondition also includes issues such as energy, water, infrastructure. And these are some of the issues that might be contained within the, the main MTSF part and not necessarily brought into the area where we, uh, where we however, they, 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 they engendered, but also they have an impact on, on the lives uh, of women, youth, and persons with disabilities. Uh, the priorities from the global, regional, and uh, levels, we looked at the S development goals. We looked at the Beijing uh, uh, Declaration and Platform for Action, including the uh, uh, a report that we did, uh, the CEDA, which is a convention on the elimination against women. We reported uh, fourth in, in 2011, uh, uh, submitted our fifth periodic report, and from there, you, you also are able to gauge. Uh, we, of course, 63 from the African Union in this strategy, but the solemn declaration on gender equality in Africa that was adopted in 2004. 
Uh, we look at the SADC gender and development, uh, uh, a number of the other uh, national, but very importantly in the last uh, year has been the generation equality campaign uh, that has, uh, is, has emerged level. So it's a global campaign and uh, very clear priorities. For the next, by 2020, 2030, we, we should have actually achieved gender equality. That gives us just nine years. South Africa is the chair of the AU. So uh, deriving from the president's commitments uh, at the AU level as chair, it's, it's also driving our gender policy. Um, the problem uh, is that in spite of all of the advances, and they are in the country, but majority of women and girls still are subjected to poverty, increasing levels of unemployment, and increasing levels of inequality and growing inequality. Uh, women and girls are still subjected to the system of patriarchy, to uh, misogyny, uh, discrimination, and uh, majority of the women subjugated uh, by these discriminatory social norms. Uh, it prevents women and the name full potential. And you know that arising from all of these, one of the, 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 the gender-based violence, the scourge of gender-based violence, gender discrimination that's ongoing, GE reports uh, that have emerged, and there are a number of are arising or, or continuing to exist. Uh, we see uh, women, uh, uh, lots of women, who remain uh, excluded from, uh, excluded from the uh, from many different ways, and even sometimes at the polit. So we need to address a lot more issues than uh, uh, that so far. Uh, we look at the inequality experience, and it's different, and it's based on the race of of. Uh, it's based on the class within a race. It's based on gender and sexual identification, whether you are urban, rural whether you are informal or of developed area, it's, it all impacts on lives of women and girls. And then it, uh, uh, we find that black African women, and particularly those living in rural areas, seem to be uh, more affected by poverty issues, by unemployment, uh, 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 you know, inequality, uh, access to services. And so we find that as much as we've made advances, there's a lot of work still to be done. We uh, we uh, look at what the chairship of the African Union. Um, President has been speaking about uh, the issue of maintaining to the African continental free trade, which is uh, fundamentally driving economic empowerment of women on the continent. Um, he's also uh, looked at uh, empowerment of women uh, on the continent and we can do what is driving at the global level in terms of procurement and uh president is pushing uh 30 percent globally uh 40 percent in the country in terms of the preferential procurement spend on women um uh president has also been able to uh get the the the, the heads of the member states to during the next 10 years uh as harm and financial inclusion of women um we the president together with other uh, 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 and other presidents have committed to driving uh, um, and, and decreasing gender-based violence on the continent. That uh, his chairship, he would start uh, or innovate the development of an African Union Convention on violence against women and children. And much of that work is already. So uh, these have given us some of the priority issues through the generation equality, and as uh, uh, mentioned, the president, uh, together with other countries, coalition on economic justice and rights for women and girls for the next five years and, and then, and then uh, 25 as well. Now, in terms of that, as I mentioned, driving the preferential procurement at a global level at 30% and minimum, uh, minimum is 40%. Um, we also have process of driving a global protocol uh, in, 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 you know, so that uh, um, a blueprint actions. Uh, in terms of uh, for women, uh, a president is also pushing the issue of digital finance funding for women businesses. A third issue is the world of work uh, and the women's leadership in the world of work is that we want a gendered economy. 
And then at the, even at the AU level, the president is, is uh, 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 quite vigorously digital, digital IDs. Uh, there's a special focus in terms of economic justice and rights economy. And the care economy is uh, issues of women as health workers, also looking at uh, care work of women and the issue of marriage between men and women in the workplace. So you can see that our priority, the, the, the ILO Convention 190 needs to be ra uh, ratified. And uh, even so that, but the idea is to also promote this universal convention. So, so uh, honorable members, uh, the, the priorities on which we have, uh, we have identified and been uh, working on was used uh, towards the MTSF, and it's coming through very clearly. So in a nutshell, captured in a capable ethical, we look at the public service, include women empowerment, gender equality in performance agreements. Uh, you look at uh, uh, to be deducted, particularly in public service where they don't pay, from the maintenance defaulters. We want women in management levels. Uh, we go up and down in this regard. And in the last year or two, we've slid down on the number of women DGs. So we need to, to, to look at all of these issues. Um, at the political decision-making, we are making advances in some areas. In some areas, we're stagnant. In others, we tend to go up and down. Uh, we really need to have active measures to achieve 50-50 parity. And it's across years, uh, but very much uh, national gender, an area of weakness in the last few years. We need to look at revitalizing, reviewing it uh, quality, uh, strengthen the location of the gender uh, uh, in terms of the focal points or what used to be uh, a status of women in the previous offices, uh, and move it into as well. There's been a huge weakness in, in this aspect, uh, even in terms of focal points, clear model on that. And we need to build the different sectors, uh, including uh, 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 the LGBTQIA plus sector, uh, um, women in rural. We need to really focus on looking at women in, this, uh, in the various uh, sectors and not treating women as a homogenous group. Uh, in terms of a legislative review, uh, we're looking at the, the women uh, coming uh, coming back into uh, development finalization. But we need to look at uh, what laws are still there that are discriminatory in nature and that also might promote practices that uh, you know can can easily tighten those. As we see the three uh, bills that are currently in parliament to tighten gender-based violence. We need to harmonize, particularly in terms of, uh, of the marriage, age of marriage, uh, and uh, uh, things started uh, towards the end. Towards the end. Uh, we've, we've, uh, uh, we've done this one already. Uh, the, um, the preferential procurement bill, we've, we've made inputs so that it's actually uh, legislating the 40% minimum target. And then there's some women in this country, is the issue of microfinancing legislation in order to promote uh, a small business, small traders, et cetera. And then we really look at the situation of uh, ex work or some one to institution. It's been on the agenda. It keeps coming up in the, in the diet. I'm seriously calling for a consideration. And then in terms of gender responsive putting, uh, DDG has gone into length. Uh, so, our, um, but one of the things that we really need to look at uh, on the, the South African National Policy Framework on Women's Empowerment, developed and uh, developed in the uh, seven, adopted by Cabinet in 2000, and has not really been reviewed. But there's been it in the country since then. There's a misalignment. We really need to look at uh, uh, that process and how do we take it forward. Moving on into the second, uh, on economic transformation and job creation, we looked at the center of economic transformation, access to ownership, control, management, and participation. Uh, we want to look at women's access to productive resources, to ownership of this land, uh, just getting the land, but are they in this land? And 
what, uh, uh, what use it is. Um, the, I, the, the issue of Chai TSM, and we need to make sure, uh, working with the department, that, they, uh, that women are, are, are accessing the title deeds and are getting security of tenure on land. It's uh, a, a call for a small women farmers uh, uh, sector. Uh, then we look at women, and we need to, to look more into the fields that were previously male-dominated. And what are the incentives that exist to draw women uh, uh, into, into uh, 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 businesses in terms of manufacturing, mining, uh, uh, petroleum, uh, uh, the petroleum industry, minerals, etc. And then we have to labor. And we don't have a policy, and we need to develop one. Uh, and, and, and we really need to look at whether it, it should contribute to the, to the gross uh, GDP. So there's a lot within the economic area. Uh, preferential pro procurement part for women-owned enterprises, and they are listed. Uh, Gender-sensitive workplace and uh, you know, upskilling women into higher positions. And as well as addressing the violence within the workplace and other just there's that's a huge issue that's uh, uh, we we need to look at the fourth uh, COVID-19 frog leaped us into the fourth industrial revolution but various sectors in the country there is uh, we need to work here that all women are brought in some way in some form into the fourth industrial revolution and how do they become innovators in the fourth industrial revolution? Public employment programs. Uh, the public service uh, in terms of hiring women and just not hiring them at the low, low, low skills, low level. Uh, the third uh, uh, priority area is skills uh, uh, women to quality education system, including financial support, uh, issues of this first, et cetera. Uh, and how do we eradicate it? Um, ECD, ECD is a, is a, is a challenge. Particularly. We need to look at it in terms of terms of addressing that unpaid care work and, and decreased care work, but increasing their opportunity for, for taking on other, uh, uh, for economic and also for other activities. Um, we, we need to look at improved results, secondary, but we need to look at metric in terms of physical science, mathematics, uh, biology, and why are girls not doing as yet more girls uh, might eat. And that then gets taken into, we need to work with issues of um, uh, higher education uh, and look at issues of bachelor's degrees, masters to PhD can overtake uh, the huge number of women with bachelor's degrees. However, we also need to look at where are these degrees? Why are they not in the STEM areas, engineering, mathematics, and how do we promote that? And um, sure, uh, we found uh, in our statistics that between girl, uh, men, young men and young women discouraged work seekers. So not in employment or educational, uh, and that there's a high number of young women. So we need to look at that issue as well. And then how do you uh, educate particular based violence at schools and, of course, in the, in the greater society, uh, but, but it impacts on young women and girls. Of teenage pregnancy. It, it's, it actually uh, girls to be mothers when they are children themselves, but it also disrupts their education and uh, it, it contributes to uh, their work. Also, it is, uh, it is resulting in dropouts and so into the system. What is happening with them? Are they able to reach data on that? And we may want to look at that. Because the sanitary dignity uh, uh, had universal access to, to sanitary products, uh, but also to the, the dignity in terms of the wash facilities, uh, access to the, to the toilet and to water, etc. cetera. Health uh, system, we need women is higher than men. But, and, and maternal mortality is reducing, but we really need to concentrate on bringing, uh, we must focus on the nutrition uh, of, uh, of um, uh, uh, mothers and uh, ladies. 
Uh, we must decrease adolescent birth rate, which is in a teenage pregnancy. Um, maternal, uh, young women's maternal, maternal rates were increasing. So we need, and then the issue of young women, uh, uh, HIV and AIDS and other ST, uh, STIs. Uh, and then the sections of young women, we, we must never take our eye off this process. And then um, uh, the sanitary mental, mental health services. We, uh, there's a growing call for the country to look at the issue of mental health services. We may, we, uh, as the other issue of psychosocial services. Um, we need to broaden access to prevention. They, 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 it's at it, it, the expenses uh, in women, in young women, uh, and, and some of it is uh, related to, like the HPV is related to, spoken about uh, mental health services. Uh, we've got a, a, a very good legislation on safe abortions. And there's always uh, in the country a growing number of illegal abortions. So why does this still continue? And then lifestyles. South Africans are fat. South African women tend to be exercised and we need to promote that. We are actually engaging with the sports, arts and culture at the moment on their women and sport policy that they're drafting. We are working with them. And it's such an interesting area that tends to get neglected. Uh, moving on to the fourth uh, policy uh, priority, it's the small quality basic services. And in this one here, we wanted to focus, uh, you know, uh, food security, of issue growing hunger is an issue in uh, increasing levels of poverty for women. So a lot of issues that are in here that needs to be looked at. Um, and then, of course, we need to look at action issues for low-paid workers and informal workers, etc. Maternal benefits, uh, 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 paternal benefits. And then we need, we need to look at how to be economically resilient so that... Did we can... Uh, did, did we, can we just try and sum up the remaining? I'm looking at time. I'm sure that um, a, a number of questions that they would like to, to also allocate enough time okay. uh, for the question and answer a comment session for the members. So can we just summarize the Absolutely. slides that are remaining for some uh, the, the, the detailed presentation? Uh, I am the Honourable Chair. I'm going to start wrapping, wrapping yeah, up. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks, DPG. My apologies. Um, so in terms of uh, five migration, and we're looking at how the planning for human settlements and, and, and how does it affect women and how does it is, and uh, looking at the issue of washing your women's lives. Um, the issue of uh, local government, a lot of it will be looking at working with the uh, issues are, are listed. Uh, the social cohesion, a big part of this one is on uh, gender-based violence, uh, other discriminatory factors that affect uh, other sectors like the LGBTQI, uh, I will. Uh, social cohesion, we, begin, we get the issue of patriarchy and harmful practices to be uh, addressed going forward. Uh, that's gender-based violence and femicide, and there's a whole process around that. Um, a better Africa and a better world, uh, in terms of we are, I think DDG has spoken about this, uh, uh, platforms globally, regionally, and, uh, uh, um, and then we also look at uh, reporting. So in conclusion, uh, um, we, we require clear setting of uh, policy and programming priorities. We need to identify the outcomes, uh, indicators and baselines to meet uh, these outcomes in five years, in 10 years, and longer. So the department uh, looking at how do we mainstream that mainstreaming that disabilities are being addressed in some form or the other. I do apologize, honorable members. I do tend to talk too much. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you very much, colleagues, for the presentation, for the introductory remarks, and thanks for the entire departmental team for the presentation. Um, that um, we as a country are measured by our budget and how it allocates for women, uh, the youth and the presentations uh, are quite similar to the honorable members to ask 
questions on the presentations that have been uh, made before us, um, as well as uh, comments that they are having. Um, I will note hands, but I think what is also important um, um, the, um, is that we, we really don't know like, if, you know, in various sections of the document to, as, a, as, as a draft framework, we know that it indicated that following consultations with stakeholders, the framework will be submitted to cabinet for consideration. So the question that we are asked has not been finalized or approved uh, for implementation and time frames as outlined in the document. So those are some of the important questions that we are asking ourselves, as well as the terminology that is used. You are having words such as should and would that are appearing across the document, you know, as opposed to, to, to terms like will and must, because for us, it shows the status of the document. So, you know, generally you would ask if, you know, the, or the framework really does have Teeth, but I'll hand over to honourable members to ask of um, honourable Mpiti and of honourable Masondo, as well as uh, the hand of honourable Mobo, and um, we'll take them in that. Yes, Masemwa. Okay, Mas. I'm only seeing the hand. Only your hand, Masondi. Thank you. Honourable Okay, Honorable uh, Maluleke, I can also see your hand. So it's going to be Honorable Mpiti, Honorable Masondo, Honorable Ngobo, Honorable Mamsengwa, uh, and then Honorable Mam to Honorable Mkweba. In that order. Thank you very much, uh, Chair, for the opening to uh, colleagues on the call. Chair, I'm, I'm really going to try to think this was a very lengthy document. Um, um, and to also apply our mind what's being said. And I think, you know, in, in, in the general space, uh, this is a very great step that the department is taking to um, uh, to mainstream uh, these issues and make sure that, you know, our, our, our executive um, is, is really bringing some, some, some life uh, to these challenges that our country, women in this country, as it affects young people as well as people but I, I am concerned, uh, um, and, and the department, by a few things, and I just would like some clarity. I'll try to. Um, I'm concerned, firstly, that it's not clear exactly, you know, what are the targets and, and the indicators that departments framework within their own department are required to do, and how exactly they are required to, to monitor and evaluate um, these particular targets. Um, and, and so I wonder, you know, do these departments from, are they able to deduce uh, responsible for within their department? Um, secondly to that, I, I, there's a lack of uh, um, synergic connects uh, with youth and, and persons living with disabilities. I, I almost, you know, when I read through the different phases that almost feel like it, it um, and so I don't understand, or at least I'm finding it very difficult to understand how youth are actually featuring in the document. Um, in fact, it just looks like, you know, when you look at the phases, there's no clear indication that speaks to what are the targets for, for youth? What are the targets for persons living with this? When the mainstreaming um, mentions at the beginning that, you know, since living with disabilities, but then when you get to that, then I think there's a bit of misalignment that is happening there. So just something to think about as well. Um, looking at the phases, uh, again, the same issues uh, here at the budgeting phase. Um, then the, who's supposed to monitor the budget allocations? Is it officials within this department? Is it offense? What is the responsibilities of those officials? Um, you know, when you look at, for example, it speaks about the gender inclusion on the National Treasury database. Who's concluded? Who's going to be monitoring um, that particular data that have happened with Treasury over um, the gender inclusion over the, the database? And also, I think, you know, these questions are coming from a point where, you know, raised on a number of occasions, the uh, uh, project um, failed because there was a lack of uniformity that existed between the provinces. And so um, the department's plan and how it was actually uh, initiative sanitary uh, uh, dignity project 
was not actually unfolding and rolling out in the different provinces in the manner that it was supposed to. And so there was a lack of uniformity. There were budget allocations that were made to provinces. And so there was a bit of a lack of how is this going to be different? What steps have been identified to ensure that this framework doesn't just become a talk show or another document that, that can be used to say, well, there is a framework. If there was to do and have meaning, Meaningfulness, then it, it, it really doesn't it, it investigate how exactly it's going to be different. Uh, as well, um, there's a checklist there uh, for us to, to look at. But again, the same question arises who's implementing uh, the checklist? If departments are not going to implement, uh, what are the repercussions? Uh, how, how are we going to handle what implementing uh, this particular thing? The person in charge, who's the, the authority you're looking at? Um, uh, the evaluation phase, uh, I'm just, you know, just pointing out these things because they're very important. Again, we're talking about the national evaluation. Uh, again, um, who is responsible? Uh, how, you know, what how, is their consequence management? Uh, what type of uh, um, um, relationships will be existing with these departments to make sure that the ground? Again, who's the person in charge? Is it the CFO? Is it the DDG? It's because if there's no person that has been made responsible has has has, be, has received the ownership of this framework within those that becomes useless uh, um, who's collecting the data uh the success of the framework is it officials within the, the department of women youth and persons with disabilities or is it officials in the other department we need to know um on the auditing phase um you know when you read through the document you see the fact that a lot of uh, uh, responsibility is put in. So what type of uh, uh, bilaterals have happened between the department and the Auditor General uh, to, you know, to prepare them and to say that this is what we, we, we expect you to assist us with? Um, what is the department's role? It seems as if everything is with the, the Auditor General. And I think the important because they go into the nitty gritty concept for me at this current stage and responsible for the different uh, mechanisms that need to be implemented. That needs to be done to tighten uh, this document and to make sure that this document doesn't just become a piece of paper, but that it is no department, but there's provinces as well that needs to be considered. And so what work has been done to answer the questions of how it deals with provinces and, and, and ensures that this framework departments and, and ensuring that the work is not only being outsourced because there's also a part in the document that refers to um, uh, that consultants will be involved in, in, in the monitoring and evaluation. And so what is the role then of officials within of making sure that there is M and E and, and, and why do we then have to outsource? So I, I, I think it's a great initiative, but I think more work needs to be done. Uh, particularly relevant authorities that will be, uh, and, and I think without that being done, uh, the document for me. So I'd really appreciate some answers. Uh, Thank you very much, Honorable PT. We'll then move um, and take the hand of uh, Honorable Masondo. Thank you, Chair. Chair, I would like to greet the the the, uh, the whole the whole house. Uh, I will not dwell much on having so many tabs that hey, we are going to call it here many times. So I have a few questions to ask in terms of the consultation on the country gender indicator framework. How accessible is this document to stakeholders like governments and civil society, et cetera? Who is responsible for implementing the, 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 check, the checklist in the planning phase in compliance? How will we will adherence to the checklist. What is the role of the department implementation of the actions in the checklist? Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Masondo. Honorable Ngobo. Uh, thank you, Chairperson, and thank you to the department. Uh, Chairperson, my the framework uh, streaming of youth and person. I just would like to know how does it and disability mainstreaming with this framework synergy with existing frameworks for youth and disabling of how do all these policies come together? Second question will be on the gender priorities, especially priority number one and uh, job creation. So I just would like to know how will it that women are, lo are, are located transformation 
have equitable access to innovation in the economy, given the demand, how will it ensure that each of these priorities are monitored? And all what is meant by equitable allocation of employment as part of sector strategies? And uh, my last question will be finance, including microfinance fees, then the limited capacity of the department, how this priority is monitored and evaluated. Thank you very much, Honorable Mamlengwa. Thank you, Chairperson. First of all, let me welcome the presentation and greet you all the members in the department. Thought, but need a clear understanding slide 10 of your presentation I was sent out as there you strengthen the commission to, to play an oversight role to advance gender equality. In consideration the extensive budgetary adjustment the commission faced of the COVID-19 which involves a budget cut of 10 million what measures do you propose considering these budgetary constraints? And how will the measures be different to previous attempts by the Commission in this regard? S27 and the social to highlight a 365 days visible campaign against GPV crimes in light of the on public gathering and budgetary impact of the COVID-19. How will the message and campaign be, con be conducted to ensure rural area, rural women who are especially most vulnerable are provided with info campaign? Lastly, on slide 29 in your presentation, that steps will be taken to eradicate trafficking of women and girls. With the trafficking is the lack of centralized data. This is major concern, steps and measures to help women and girls. There is a new centralized data. You need a true picture, otherwise it is only sweet talk again. How does the to approach this? Thank you. Honorable uh, Thank you, Chairperson. Eric, um, I greet you all the committee. Um, and then the deputy the minister, I agree. The question is, how is the department monitor and evaluate? Make sure that this episode engage targets to the women, youth, and persons with disabilities in rural areas to be assisted and recognized. Because why I'm saying this, uh, Chairperson, or question this, question this, this these are the people who uh, not uh, been and their voices can't be heard. The crime, the rape pregnancy is in a high position in places, rural areas, because there is nothing. There is not enough schools. Now the youth are losing the hope. Would you come with a clear my department and make change these lives early as possible? First one, and it must be the main priority. It must be fifty percent into this uh, women and uh, and and uh, young girls, uh, because more especially the women are those persons who look after the families in most of time in poverty. The mothers, they must be not extra like economic empowerment. The undermining of women in the working places is too high. It positions. These things, not just reading in the documents, and and stay done. Thank you, Chairperson. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Mam Sonti. 
Uh, Honorable Ma'am Maluleke. Thank you. Let me join other honorable members to appreciate the presentation. Chairperson, I that you raised earlier on that the framework is after. So if we can be clarified, how far is it that do this? Because we, we must not have a framework that is, if they can, we can get clarity on that one, maybe as looking at this, if it, it can be implemented, it, it can, good fruits, especially for women, uh, the concern of honorable MP talks about gender issues, but people with disability and youth, they are not exactly uh, coined in this framework, but I, we have, uh, honorable MP has said, they are going to make sure that maybe, because it's still a draft, they will ensure that they include people living with disability and youth in this uh, good document. At Chairperson, you see, they experience that they know of documents that are in South Africa, but the implementation part of it is a challenge. Take the document here, even the presentation, some of the risk. But then I would like to know what is it that it took to make sure that those, so that this document is not just a written document implemented because we want to gaining from what is in this document. And Chairperson, I, I just want to find out from the department because this document is not only for men, persons with disability and youth, but for the entire government, meaning that all departments must have this budget responsive, I mean, uh, responsive budgeting is going to ensure that departments take seriously the budgeting for our women, our youth living with disability. Is it our department, is it the department of women? That is all the departments. What is the, maybe I didn't get it clear when we're presenting. If maybe we can be explained to who is going to that this framework is in the monitor to ensure that we get the value for this uh, document. Thank you, Chairperson. Ma'am Joyce, you know, um, at the end, I'm, I'm just reminded if they a community that the president is calling a joint hybrid sitting of parliament to outline South Attraction and Recovery Plan. And um, we've gone through the final cabinet with the quarter presentation on this matter. And we are picking up that nowhere in this document is the, 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 the department featuring. It, it, it really does look like we have missed the, is, is saying that how could we have this for, for the country? And I think we, we really need to matter. And um, it, it is, uh, I'll then hand over to the last uh, on the list, which is Honorable Mkweba. Over to Honorable Mkweba. Thank you very much, uh, Chair. Greetings, honorable members and the department. Let me welcome the detailed report. Uh, however, I've got only three questions. One is on the on country. My question, uh, Chair, is that uh, what are the outcomes of the consultation on the country gender indicator framework. Understanding the fact that, that we're working with uh, youth persons with disabilities and um, where we get them is on the ground in our provinces and our municipalities. And uh, the second question, how accessible is this document to the state? Which means I'm talking the civil society organizations and your CPOs and uh, obvious ordinary women and youth and persons with disability in rural areas. And secondly, Chair, to on education health. You know, 
I've picked up uh, 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 internally the, the, even the last presentation on clear setting of product department. There's an issue there proving excess of girls and women to quite improve outcome across education system through, for example, the eradication to eradicate illiteracy. My question then is, what is specifically the department in making sure that the listed items are achieved? Why I'm asking this question, Chair, is that uh, what has taught us that um, we and persons with disabilities, especially in rural areas, to poverty, makes a significant obstacle realizing girls and women education. And you'll remember that if you look, you know, across the country, and uh, persons with disabilities, or these girls across, in, especially in rural areas, success, they're jobless. They are, will be the role of the department to make that to make sure that some of these are clear presented to the portfolio committee today. Had, or maybe if I can put it, you know, holders participate fully. And then, uh, chair, the last uh, question to the department. I've, on the presentation, I've heard them talking about guidelines to be issued to provincial treasurers. Then my question is that uh, what will be the guide and when will it be issued those guidelines to the provincial treasurers? So, thank you, Chair. Thank you much, uh, Honorable Nkweba, and thank you to have raised the comments and the question. You know, I think what is important, um, Honorable Members, is that all the time, we, when the department comes to the portfolio committee to make presentations or when we, we receive, we, we do also cross-reference cross with other arms of government. And one of the, the, of the presentations of uh, 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 the department had noted the involvement of, of, um, of uh, in training of public servants. So one had an opportunity to look at the empty document and there's one intervention that introduction of compulsory modules for public servants on diversity, which is gender, race and disability. And in terms of the actioning um, a, a department or the responsibility, it speaks to it well as the National School of Government. So one is actually asking what is what then becomes the role of the department guard? Because in other documents like the, the role of the department in relation to training of public safety uh, is 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 um, is not clear on what the. And um, in terms of has being smart, honourable Peter had to of of ensuring that uh, at the indicators that we have raised, uh, what specifically needs to be done. Also, the issue of monitoring of each of these indi indicators is very important. Sense because when it happens when they when when other when the department and how will we know that the the, the departments have actually not come com, um, or questions that we should be answering to, the last one must raise before even handing over to the department is the issue of the thorough understanding of, of some of these indicators, and um, I'm asking myself are not really clearly understood by us. Uh, uh, you know, departments supposed to be implementing some of these indicators that are not really clear. The of mainstreaming in targeting them by gender, age, and disability. You know, I'm just asking myself, what does that even mean? So the worry is that then um, ourselves as this project expect line departments to understand them. Um, thanks, Honorable Member, to uh, DDG and your team to respond to the questions and um, the comments that have us. Over to you, Titi Chin. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, the detailed uh, question from the, from the honorable members. I will uh, uh, respond to some of the issues. I think the first thing is the status of the document. And, and I really learned how this, this document was adopted by cabinet uh, on the 27th of March, 2019. And, uh, you know, it has been forwarded to the committee on various occasions. Um, and others would be aware that uh, but in March, 2019, the Department of Women. So, so it was right at the end of the fifth administration. 
And so it was just before the um, election and the you know government, the sixth administration, announcement by the, the president that there would be a new Department of Women, Youth and Prison. What we are presenting here, specifically the gender responsive planning and budgeting, and the department is integrating uh, the department itself and as well as integrating multiple functions within the department, including issues of, say, uh, planning, uh, monitoring, uh, and evaluation, and research, and other areas. So that process is still, of integration is still underway, but in already areas of direct collaboration. For example, when we did analysis of strategic plans of departments, uh, analysis of APPs and strategic plans of departments, we worked ourselves together with the national, the youth development, the, the rights of persons with disability division to do, uh, and we did that jointly. So when we did that analysis and um, it was, a, it was a fed into the DPME uh, analysis. So uh, the documents that we have been forwarding, uh, the only thing that in the new term of office, we, uh, you know, and I, I've, I've just done a search on the documents that we've sent and, and, you know, it, 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 I'm not sure. Um, I see on page 37 that it says the initial work, it says phase one, taken by the Department of Women on gender responsive budgeting in 2017-18 uh, consultation processes with all this and resulted in the development of a draft GRP. So that was 17-18. Then in a decision to have a much broader focus than simply budgeting. We, you know, we had a, 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 a national summit representatives of different organizations in November 2018. We also have of different African countries on what this gender response should look like. And it was then tabled in the cabinet system, adopted, approved uh, cabinet on the 27th of March uh, 19. We have since then been, been implementing, and I think that's what we've been trying to reflect presentation is not just the framework itself, plan, but also to say this is the aid uh, in, in, in implementing it. Uh, which should and would and will and must, um, uh, again, uh, uh, we will look at that. Uh, but I mean, as I said, this document is, uh, it's, it, it's now, you know, uh, it's, it's since, since 2019, it is an official document, but we will, um, you know, look at, uh, at that. I'll give an example, it says, for example, on page 30, committees, should hold government account in relation to the implementation uh, of the GRPB, uh, the achievement of bills and, and um, result, results. So I, I think that we will look at that because the intention is not to say, it, it, this is indicating what should happen. So, you know, we will obviously say it will happen. Um, we'll look at that issue, uh, honorable. Uh, um, and then in terms of the, okay. um, yeah. So we'll, PT raised uh, uh, extensive uh, issues, um, which I will I will try to uh, address. Um, I think the it, 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 it says here it's unclear is what are the departments required to do and how to monitor and evaluate the targets. So if we look at the the the, the purpose of the multiple planning instruments, starting medium-term strategic, strategic framework, the five-year strategic plans of departments and, and, and the APP the annual uh, plans of departments and entities, provinces, growth and development strategies, uh, municipalities. And then there's also sectoral plans within a sectoral plan on gender-based violence and femicide, in a sense, is a sectoral plan, which, is a mul which has multiple stakeholders within that plan. And, and then you would also have programs Program plans. So, for example, the sanitary dignity program is a you had a plan, and then you would also get project plans operators. So there's there's multiple levels uh, of in, at which planning takes place, and there are multiple. You find indicators, indicators, and also obviously or aggregate into into the into the country plans and the. Um, so our focus is mainly on the level of the country plans. And, and, the, and the institutional. So for that reason, when the uh, NDP, the F actually we prioritize specifically, because, 
Um, if we don't get targets, indicators and targets into the NTSF, then it is unlikely that they will then be included. institutional plans of departments. And so that's why we put a lot of uh, making inputs into the NTSF. And um, I think those indicators and targets, then what then happens is the NTSF departments are then required to report on their progress on those indicators and targets. Now that is, 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 is through DPME. We said we don't want departments to have to duplicate reporting, so report to us and report to DPME. Um, if, the, if the, for example, the number of uh, plans that are gender responsive, let that be a one-stop reporting, but then analyze the data from DPME. Yeah, and then this data would obviously also then form the basis for different types of evaluations. But that's, like Danao said, that's not the only, the end of data. There are multiple data, really, uh, try to use multiple data sources. That is a, also obviously is, is a very credible uh, data source with regard to uh, indicators, whether it be unemployed, the access of rural women to self, um, you know, there, there, there are um, multiple data sources. And what, based on that data and the data analysis, I would then develop a gender performance report. Now, since we are an integrated department, it's, it's like develop a, a performance report on not only gender, but also youth and dis disabilities. And the youth and disability rights uh, uh, colleagues also have very clear uh, you know, uh, policy frameworks. For example, there's currently the national youth policy is, 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 is in the systems for the youth indicators. Now, and then uh, Honourable Mbiti also raised the question of, you know, do departments know what they are responsible for? So the implementation plan of the gender responsive planning budgeting framework, which was approved by Cabinet, does indicate what departments are responsible for, but we've also, the MTSF is very explicit, departments are responsible for. Um, so, you know, I think most departments are pretty clear on, um, you know, what what they are responsible for. The guideline, the framework itself, as well as the multiple guidelines that, 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 that have been the plans, the assessment framework, et cetera, et cetera, also measurements uh, what they are responsible for. Honorable raises a very critical issue because as I was saying when we were presenting, we have realized the key point that, uh, that we're very uh, uh, conscious of, that simply doing a document is really doesn't mean it then automatically translates into practice. So that's why we've put huge effort into working on analyzing their plans, giving them, we, we have the high level steering committee, DPME, and we, we um, you know, uh, 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 addressing those, answering their questions, various forums, the first forum, which is made up of say about three people from uh, each department, uh, of the officials learning. And we have um, first occasions so that people can better understand what they are uh, responsible for and how to go step guides. Um, there's also a community PME convenes, which include, and, you know, they, they also, uh, the institutional plans and to implement this. And then there's the, the, the Office of the Premier Forum at DPME convenes, uh, which is of representatives the, uh, from the offices of the Premier, especially the planners, um, but uh, on the, ensuring the implementation of the strategic revised framework that was approved by Cabinet in, 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 in uh, 2019. I'm talking now about the DPME framework. So making inputs in all of those because we, we forums, because we realize that, you know, simply reading a document, uh, being able to implement it, in having workshops with um, because, and particularly we're focusing on offices of the Premier, the Provincial Treasuries, we've, the, the, and then the offices of the status of women in provinces. We had a workshop in February uh, where we uh, also presented the framework, uh, specific uh, uh, roles of different stakeholders in a province. So what is the role of the Provincial Treasury, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, that very important process. And um, we, we uh, the COVID did disrupt us with regard to, uh, uh, you know, engaging with, with, with stakeholders. 
Um, but we ha have also been having uh, sessions with provincial, with all the provincial set, uh, planners. The model was to say, we must make sure is uh, 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 understands this, this system so that they can then uh, cascade it down. And that is a system that is used throughout government. So for example, the analysis of provincial strategic plans and APPs is undertaken by the, the offices of the, the premier. Um, so we said, let's work with, but what we've done in addition is we've said, look, uh, we, we've been having sessions with, for example, the KZN special session with all their planners on, about how they can mainstream gender. Um, but also, it, you know, they, a lot of them also ask, you know, I'm in the Department of Transport, what are the indicators that we can use? So we've explained to them the methodology about how to, because indicators uh, are supposed to come from, uh, you know, an analysis of what are the, whether it be safety of women, transport operators getting access. Uh, so, so, you know, we've had to for people to then be able to then implement it in their strategic plans and their APPs. Um, we we uh, yesterday had a, 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 a workshop with provinces uh, attended by about 90 people um, remotely, and we have got massive uh, feed, good feedback from indicated that we will continue to engage with the available because that's how people will understand, you know, translate the document into, into the actual uh, plans into account. Once it's in their strategic plans and AP system of accountability then kicks in, members would be very aware because then the, the, the provincial portfolio committees, the national portfolio committees would then also be holding the partners to account to say, look, on women and and and, and in, in your APP uh, and you are not achieving it, you know, and, and, and that accountability kicks in the accountability uh, through the uh, audit process as well as the auditor general kicks in. With regard to the energy and heart connects youth and persons disability, yes, uh, currently, as I, as I say, it is basically a gem because it was developed uh, and it, when we were still the Department of Work, busy integrating as a department and I think having an integrated framework and there's already done in that regard. Um, who's monitoring budget allocations? Well, that's exactly what, um, you know, that's what Treasury uh, would, that's we would also be getting the reports from Treasury, for example, at our high level steering committee, we asked Treasury to uh, us, uh, 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 um, you know, what is the current agenda? And similarly, that is also a level, but there's still a lot of work that is. Um, the dignity program, um, I wouldn't want to speak about that, but um, if you look at program theory and pro um, it, 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 it um, you know, and here I'm speaking in my, uh, my, my capacity of, of uh, you know, it doesn't mean uh, that let's say, for example, you start a program on, um, you know, because what works, if you look at program theory, it, it, and you can't necessarily say that something that works in Nepalale is definitely going to work the same way in, 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 in deep sleep. Part of program design and program theory is also taking into account um, you know, the, the, the local, you know, I'm just raising a principle, but the issue of, um, you know, um, you know, that, 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 that's something which, um, you know, I think we, we've, we've have, you know, our approach has been to say, look, uh, you know, APPs and strategic plans are, and they, they, they must, there must be a uniform approach, but we don't, we also don't want to, um, you know, innovation that could come. Um, you know, the manner in which the, uh, uh, this is rolled out. So I'm a toilet district, you know, that, that adopted a particular uh, increasing the procurement access to, to, to women-owned businesses. So, you know, what we need to do with that up that case study, we need to say, what is the model that worked here and can it be uh, replicated? Yes, yeah, so the issue of I agree, uh, Honourable Mbiti, that Definitely don't want this uh, double stamp, and and that we don't want it to be. We are working very hard. BDG. Yes. I don't mean to interrupt reading your your responses. I would um, um, also consider the issue. Yeah. Of 
1800 hours so we don't have uh, uh, much time okay. so i add it um a, 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 a ddg to order you have sent us a document and on page seven of the there are um, a, 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 there's a, there's there's a line that refers to this document as a draft. It calls it the draft framework, the M E N A. Page seven of that very same document that it is intended that the following consultations with the framework will be submitted to cabinet for on the very same document that the department. Okay, my apologies, uh, Chair. I will. I, yeah, I will. I will follow that up. And, uh, my apologies for that. Thank you. Okay, so I'll go back to the, uh, my apology, I'll, I won't go into every detail. Um, Honorable Masondo raised the issue of the consult uh, the, on the country gender indicator framework. And I think that, you know, we've had extensive consultation with uh, civil society and, 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 and stakeholders around priorities. And, um, you know, that as indicated in the presentation made by Ms. Reddy, and the, the, those priorities are then, you know, translated. And we've had consultations with many different sectors of society, many, many different sectors of society. And those uh, uh, priorities are then translated, the uh, policy priorities and then are then um, the various uh, uh, planning and monitoring uh, instruments. The issue of who's responsible for this question has come up, the various responses. We monitor overall the implementation of the framework. And we had the framework and we collected data from central of government departments, from national departments, and from the premier's offices. And that's where we uh, then, we, we, we then, and we then did a report, pulls together the, 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 the analyze. Uh, Honorable Mbobo, the of women and, uh, sorry, of youth and persons with disabilities, um, you know, I think that question, uh, we we are trying to get all programs with regard to not just also uh, age and, and disability rights, so that how we um, ensure that that is, is, is addressed. Um, the issue of COVID-19 and the budget cuts, that has, it has had a significant impact, uh, as, as uh, honorable, uh, it has had a, a significant impact on, on our ability to undertake uh, certain. All the, somebody mentioned earlier the issue of consultants. All our work so far has been uh, the development of the framework was done internally by our own. Uh, do we use consultants? Um, but we are planned evaluation uh, uh, service provider to do formative evaluation. So that's we are considering uh, with regard to. Well, Sonti, um, the issue of rural, women, youth, and persons with disabilities in rural areas, I think one of the uh, response, one of the reasons introduced the district development model is because a lot of development is taking place, maybe, but the rural areas are being left behind. So through the district development model, and I think that's why there's also prioritization, for example, of you know some of some some of the rural uh, districts, so that the whole of government, and as Deputy Minister also said, that the whole of government, what are their deliverables and targets within a, uh, in rural areas? In terms of land, uh, we're quite pleased that um, the, the, there's been an announcement that 700,000 hectares of land will be allocated to, <coughs> sorry, women, youth, and uh, <coughs> my apologies. And that women will get 50% of that land. <coughs> there is a, a beneficiary selection policy that has also been served by the Department of Agriculture Land Reform and <coughs> um, Recovery Plan. Um, the department <coughs> in multiple processes around the development of the economic and um, has put forward multiple uh, proposals around that. Uh, some of them have been uh, adopted um, and others have not. But I also noted that the, uh, the, the, um, the governing party, uh, that there was agreement that uh, the, there should be mainstreaming of gender in all national, provincial, district, and local programs, gender budgeting and reporting. 
and then I focused also on the issue of economic and financial inclusion as key to the economic reconstruction recovery plan in 40% set aside for, for, women's, uh, for women in public procurement, closing the gender pay key economic sectors, land, uh, but also, of course, the issue of women in informal businesses in terms of that. So we had also repeatedly raised that there needs to be just and can see where are women benefiting a recovery plan. Um, yeah, uh, uh, the, in terms of the uh, equipment with regard to diversity training, yeah, that we have the, the governance and the GP level steering committee on gender responsive from you know, from from 28. We actually co-wrote a module on gender. NSG also has uh, training modules on gender mainstreaming. They have training modules on femicide, and with then translated that into the first, they had the first session, eight inputs there. In fact, we gave a lecture as part of that. I think it was a four day course and uh, they were very, very happy, but that needs to be, that was only, so that, that needs to be rolled out uh, to, 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 you know, across the public service. So the issue of compulsory modules is, is very, very important. And uh, we will uh, continue to go to that. Chair, um, I, I will stop there and see if my colleagues as well. Thank you. Thank you, uh, DDG. Chairperson, um, I am covered. I just speak to the DDG. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Can I just come in? Yes, yes, please, DM. Yeah. Well, there's no time now. I think the DDG has tried the best request. But basically, it will take this issue of plan and not saying and not directly linking it with what we are doing for uh, with uh, disability. Because tomorrow, the, over the weekend, is having a strike plan. Had a discussion with the DG, there will definitely be an attempt to avoid presenting programs in a fragment. The, there'll be an attempt to talk uh, them when it comes to uh, the targets and indicators. But also, if I understood uh, the, the DG clearly, we also are at the stage where we have to limit uh, ourselves so that we are able to uh, measure the defamage from what honorable members uh, that it must be made. When we set targets, they must be measurable. <clears throat> Otherwise, this will be like all other instruments of government, which are good, but we put them. Okay, I, I fully agree with the TTG when she says she will check the sections in a document as though he's still awaiting approval high-level le planning meetings, it has been approved. Challenge for all, if one department uh, does not meet the criteria. I know I, I, Parliament will say we don't pass the budget uh, if it doesn't meet the criteria uh, of, uh, in terms of women, youth, and it's, it's the challenge which I see, uh, which the, the department will have to really the capacity relying uh, on the Department of Performance Monitoring and Evaluation, but also our own capacity uh, to be able to scrutinize each and every department and make sure that in an intergrades they talk to gender, they take to age issues of, of urban rules. Of course, people who to do that uh, properly, since those people to do that, it's a, it goes back to the budget, that you are at the point, departments like ours, they are caught 
in a very difficult time where Treasury is not uh, allocating any new money. But I think the vision, honorable members can trust it. It just needs more certainty, uh, but also maybe in partnership uh, with our ISO to be more firmer monitoring what is coming. It's because if we don't have the capacity, they will do as little as they can. Uh, there will be no serious commitment. The government high level meeting when the president is closing, he policy strongly. So it, it, it's really up to what, what instruments do we devise to, to make sure that it's it and including so um, yeah, the integration I've spoken to the integration of youth and persons with dis disability when it comes to uh, uh, planning to the, the government departments. Uh, that is being done in government through different structures, the clusters, the cabinet committees. But I think some work working through this find a way of making a presentation uh, to strategy uh, and the common understanding across all portfolio committees uh, in, in, in parliament uh, as to where we are, where are we going, so that uh, perspective. So the, the draft issue, as the DTJ has said, that will be removed to training. I think it was Honorable Mkweba who uh, wanting to know more about the you know, modules. Well, the department uh, could try and do whatever, but I think across government, they should, uh, in, in, in consultation with uh, the Department of Public Service and Administration as to what kind of training will be needed, orientation, at what level, uh, how is it going to be reinforced, uh, either through at a senior level and at all like there, we are far from members are asking. Ours is really to tighten during our uh, planning. Uh, uh, key indicators and targets measure. Uh, whatever we, 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 we've agreed upon. Um, honorable members, I have just tried to add to what the DDG has said. I'm aware of the time constraints. A question, I think it was Honorable Shenwa uh, about the role of the Commission on Gender e e e Equality. Uh, that, that uh, number 10. Uh, remember, the, they can call hearings and they can research any issue. So we have to make sure that brief them on an ongoing basis of concern, work in with them. And of course, the issue of social cohesion and rural women, it came in again, slide 27 from honorable, uh, all other social issues that you see. We, we are all that for us to make impact, to make a difference, we'll have to target those constituencies. The spirit of this uh, this can only be rural women. It will be challenges facing youth, uh, persons with disability in, work in rural areas. Uh, because we can no longer continue uh, planning in a fragmented manner. We have to look for cross uh, issues. Uh, I think Mam Sonji also um, rural areas, whether they have to, certainly it's not. As I've said, we might need capacity to tighten it for the components of our department and instruments to monitor and evaluate and engage whoever seem to be uh, uh, faltering. We have a responsibility to ensure that targets are met. The Department of uh, 
monitoring and evaluation has that even a better capacity than us, but also cabinet as a whole is their responsibility to ensure that we begin to aggressively uh, stop excluding or leaving uh, these vulnerable behind. With regard to uh, Siko was saying about needing to address, based on the planning which we have had on the economy in Parliament this week and ended yesterday, I have no doubt that uh, the President will give a clear about the issues that honourable members uh, have. And we know also with this process of always sent to the drafters whatever is important. So the DDG will look at all what we have gone through and see uh, what, especially after the strike plan over the weekend. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Honorable Member. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable DM. Uh, and thank you very much, Honorable Members. Um, the time is now six. I have a six o'clock meeting that I'm extremely late for. We have come to the end of um, our Honorable Members. So I will take it that, but, but to those questions that we've not really been satisfied with the responses, I'd make follow-up questions to the department in writing and get clarities in the following meetings that um, will be coming up. So uh, thank you very much to everyone who has participated in this meeting and attended as well. Closed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Member.